hello hello everybody welcome to another conversation by consciousness rising and today we are going to be having a very rich and um, intuitive and earthy conversation with uh, somebody who is the founder of Peter Lily Organics, which is a range of teas that we get right here in Zimbabwe. And her name is Peter Searle. Hi, Peter. Welcome. Hi, Tanya. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much. And, Good to be uh, here. I love your show. Oh, your thank show. you. Thanks. I'm just going to read out to Peter a little bit about you. Okay, so you're the founder of Peter Lily Organics, which is a herbal tea company that sells a range of herbal infusions available in all of our local supermarkets nationwide. Uh, you grow most of the herbs using organic farming practices on a farm outside of Harare. You've studied Ayurvedic medicine in Australia with David Frawley, also studied permaculture and an ancient head massage practice that I can't pronounce the name. Would you like to pronounce that name? It's called Kalari Chakusa. <laughs> Kalari Chakusa. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm not even going to try that. Okay, um, so Peter, you've also, yeah. done, that you've also done several plant medicine journeys, which have taken you deep into the vibration of plants. And today you're going to talk to us about uh, using plants to change our vibration and include some ancient folklore and uh, useful tips. So that's amazing. Now, let me just tell yeah. everybody that last uh, week I attended a, a, a talk at a Garden Club and Peter was there teaching us all about the herbs and she brought the herbs with her and we, she gave us each, we felt them, we smelt them, we felt them um, intuitively to see what we liked and then also mixed up the, the plants together and it was just so amazing and just so fabulous that I thought, I think everybody in the world needs to know about this. So, Peter, was this all your life? Were you interested in these things all your life? Uh, definitely my adult life, yes. Um, I spent a lot of my 20s in Australia um, and really uh, went to a lot of colleges wanting to study herbal medicine but I never actually committed to a classroom mm -hmm. um, so I always kind of got distracted by like a I don't know a road trip or something else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, and, and that's that has its pros and cons so returning back to Zimbabwe and having some land I spent a lot of time reading and growing the plants and just actually doing it, living it rather. And, and so it's a, a constant study. Mm -hmm. okay, so now tell us about, about the, the Peter Lily teas. So they, the initial vision for Peter Lily was to do essential oils and to do kind of holistic beauty care. Um, and I got a still and I began investigating that and it's, it was just massive financially in every way. So tea became the sort of the, the obvious first step. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, it's just grown from there. I think uh, Zimbabweans or, or the world have become a lot more open and receptive to, to health products and herbal products. So it's really helped to bring petalily into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So which, you know, it started out as a very little kind of tiny little dream and it's just grown and grown. Okay. And particularly um, in this COVID times, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Mm, that's right. Uh, and you know what I've always found so fascinating and I really loved, uh, you know, I love watching those sort of uh, movies or, or series sort of period you know, like Outlander, uh, where they, they use all the herbs. Because you think about it, that in ancient times, we never had these kind of medicines, modern day medicines, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, tell us a little bit about that and the history of, um, of these herbs. But how oh, I can't remember. In, it's, it's as old as we are. Herbal medicine and herbal law is as old 
as humanity. And it's only in the last hundred years that mainstream uh, Western pharmaceutical medicine has has taken a front seat. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the Middle Ages, people grew an elder tree because they knew the, the berries, the flowers, it just grew at your cottage and you would go and harvest that. There were colds, there were flus. It was in our blood more. And it mm. does still flow in our blood. We're just um, disconnected from it. You know, mm. uh, it's a wonderful, um, cool. there's a great book by David Hoffman and he um he, you know, all of life is about homeostasis and our relationship with the, with the planet is about this, this balance, this continual ebb and flow. And herbs are like the hormones that help regulate us in contact with the planet. Mm-hmm. And I, I, just, I just love that, that they're really a, a gift from the earth to um, help us heal and remain connected to her. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, because because when we are in our, our healthiest state, then what we can create is is phenomenal. Um, mm. So they they just um, I think we've called this session plant alchemy because it's it's using herbs to enhance your state of being and it's enhance your your wellness rather than focusing on illness. Let's Let's be well. Let's be really healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's what the earth wants us to be. That's right. She yeah. doesn't want us to be sick. You know, if we're sick, then we're disconnected. We, but if we're healthy, then we're going to be vibrant with her. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, yeah. And um, also, and also, I mean, it, it sort of correlates to everything that, that we believe in this sort of vibrational universe. Because everything is a mm. vibration, isn't it? Mm. Mm. So, um, and I remember Kazadi Kalunga, he once said to me about medicines. He said that if you have got a problem with your liver and you take uh, something specifically for your liver, the frequency of that medication is a match to the frequency of the liver. Mm. Okay. Mm. So this is not obviously mm. modern medication. But I mean, obviously all of our medicines all originated from, from nature and those natural remedies, if you could call them that. So um, yeah, no, it's just a fascinating thing. Now, what you had us doing last week was feeling, feeling and t- tactilely, but also intuitively feeling um, mm. and smelling the herbs. Do you think that, that that is something that that people can use if they say not feeling well or they've got a bad stomach, just go out into the garden or if they have a herb garden and feel what what they really feel like, what is a match to them at that time, on that day, in that moment? Absolutely. I mean, it would, everything does begin with intention and sort of what the... Um, I think absolutely because it's a stepping into into your power of like I'm because with any healing it's about you stepping up and saying I want to be well and and mm. then connecting with a healer with a doctor mm. so stepping into your garden with that intention of I want to be well or I want to feel better and then connect with what's around you mm. absolutely um, mm. and and you might be drawn to the rosemary. You might be drawn to the roses, you know, mm. just go and, um, but it's just opening, opening your intuitive senses more to the environment around you. Mm. Um, and, and letting that support and, and vibration come in. Mm. But it, it begins with that first intention of, I want to be well. Then you, you pick yourself up. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and so, and the other thing that that you were saying uh, last week is that we don't necessarily have to ingest it. We can also like have a nice relaxing bath and put these herbs or, or you know whatever we're feeling like or appreciating the um, the fragrance of. We can put those in the bath and just wallow in it, 
and that also mm. um, is a way to mm. to induce it, so to speak. Yeah, to to commune. I mean, it's mm. all it's all communing. Um, and yeah, rosemary, roses, and yeah, with the full moon, the new moon, any kind of you know ceremony with your kids, just mm -hmm. there. But fragmented, throw some rose petals in their baths, and it'll just it'll change the whole vibe. Mm. Um, what about the children? Are you saying so if you've got like fractious yeah. kids? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, even some rose petals in a in a bowl of water will just dry them. Mm. Um, it's playing. It's playing. It's playing with plants. Um, put some water. Put some flowers in your water sometimes. Drink flower water. Mm. Right. That's a that's a good one. And I know a lot of people do do that. Um, I know. Uh, well, certainly, you know, you have a jug of water, and you put you might put your lemon in, but you can also put all the other things, the mint and the rosemary, and and infuse it that way. Yeah. 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 And are there any books would you think that people should just um, look up and Google? You know, because as you say, in, even in our gardens every day, uh, we have um, things that are available, things that we might not even know. Mm. I'd say, oh, well, for me, a wonderful woman's been Margaret Roberts. She's okay. South African. She's based from in the region. She looks at some some traditional herbs but also quite a few western plants mm -hmm. she has just such a lovely overview it's very mm. very readable and usable um so mm. that's margaret roberts um and there's so many there's so many yeah go with margaret roberts i'd mm. say Mm. Yeah, but in, in anything that, that that you can tell us about that that's sort of like we all know necessarily know that we might have growing as weeds or uh, like you mentioned roses. Most people have that rosemary. We have that. Um, what else? Okay, yeah, dandelion. I'm going to bring it up. So so this is the the seed head. Yeah, it normally has a, a very big yellow flower, mm -hmm. and it kind of it, these are the leaves. Mm -hmm. They don't, they look like dragon's teeth. That's right, yeah. And I think you could imagine that you are, you're in, in jesting like a dragon. And they, they kind of, they grow like this. They look like a, sh a fallen star on the, mm -hmm. that landed on the earth and, and opened. Um, and so eating these leaves, eat the dandelion leaves every day. Mm -hmm. Put them in your salad. Don't don't dig them up. Just just cultivate them, and mm -hmm. they're, they're so good for the liver. And oh, just, really? So, yeah. So so helping with the kind of particularly now anxiety, fear. You just and it's got loads of other stuff from minerals. Got so much. Mm -hmm. It's quite bitter. Mm. So like two two or three leaves a day. Mm -hmm. Um, just go and munch. When mm -hmm. you go, you take take your rubbish or go in the garden. Just eat a couple of dandelion leaves. Okay, <clears throat> that's great advice. And yeah. and now, when it comes to the actual teas that you make, I mean, obviously eating it straight out of the ground mm. has, a, has that got a different vibration or healing properties to something that's already been processed, maybe, and put into teas. I mean, this is fresh. This is, I mean, I'm sure the solar energy is much more potent in a, a mm. fresh leaf. Mm -hmm. um, the petal lily, the teas, there's a, there's a deep nourishment. You know, when you make yourself a cup of tea, and, right. and I do say that on the box, make it, it's, it's your time. It's taking time to nourish you. Um, and we've got the, the rose geranium or the innocence blend, which is, is so much about um, self-love, stepping into that vibration of love. Mm. Um, and it's like Rose will kind of hold that frequency and you ingest it and she's just going to lift you up into her zone. Mm. Um, you know, and chamomile just brings this, this um, we see it like a luminous joy. 
Mm -hmm. um, so if you're feeling angry or fiery, you know, just, just that's why that chamomile is so beautiful because you just, <gasps> it's okay. mm -hmm. you know, will bring you into that space. Um, and so it's, it's, it's use, drinking teas, peppermint, wonderful during the day. Uh, it's very sharp, that, that minty, so for concentration, for meetings, Mm -hmm. no, no. a little bit of vada vim mm. peppermint wonderful mm. Mm. it's a little um, bit like what you say maybe it's a little bit stimulating yeah mm. yeah a lot more, more and so so you've got all these different energies that you and and it's going to work differently with every single person i mm. i can't drink chamomile at night it keeps me awake other people right. drink chamomile it puts them to sleep mm. um true but that's each of our own journeys mm. um, and I think that's why I like um, I've enjoyed the, my own journey where I haven't learned from a classroom that's right it's, it's my relationship that's developed with plants mm. Mm. Um, and we can and we can each have that we, we all have that connection mm -hmm. and it's it's not really having to know the scientific. I mean, obviously, with more potent, potent plants, but your your mints, your rosemary, um, sage, those are just wonderful, mm. everyday mm. little magicians that should be in your life. Mm. So e even even cooking with them, heating them up in the food, they still yeah. they they yeah. still offer up some kind of healing properties. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I just see like lemongrass, cooking with lemongrass. It's just such a warm and kind of social. I mean, I think lemongrass has revolutionized Thai cooking. You know, you, when you think of Thai food, you think of that lemony, mm -hmm. lime kefir and lemongrass flavors. Mm -hmm. um, and it's social, it's community. Right. And, and lemongrass offer, offers that when you cook. It's... Mm -hmm. it's this warmth and the flavors and and curry leaves cooking with curry i mean i think curry leaves are just evidence that miracles exist because how can a leaf smell like that it's just like <laughs> oh, this is amazing <laughs> that's right that's right and it's, I, it's kind of yeah life tastes good life can be really good and you can you can vibe with these things and it's mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. feel happy and then you're like oh my god i'm gonna go and do a rain ceremony now because i feel really excited mm -hmm. you know and 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 so this relationship to the planet um is a deeper connection deeper connectivity mm -hmm. and also um, it, it brings us to that that old sort of philosophy about thinking about what you eat you know like it's almost like blessing the food if you bless the mm -hmm. food you uh it, it benefits your body so much more i believe that you know it's the thoughts mm -hmm. the thoughts that that you put into it is what you're going to mm -hmm. get back it's not just a case of gobbling it down yeah not to speak so, so to be mindful i mean even if you are going to say have a, a cup of of chamomile tea or rose petal tea think about it connect with it on the mental level and think oh, this is what I'm going to have and this is why I'm going to have it and I'm really going to love enjoy, love drinking it and yeah. that will like amplify the benefits yeah. of anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, hundred, a hundredfold. But it, 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 it ignites the, the kind of the healer within you. You know, as soon as you're working with all that intention, mm. your vibration is going to pick up because mm. you... And... and and then there's just so much support, mm. you know, and mm. making iced teas, you know, keep, keep hibiscus, uh, you can play, you can put hibiscus with cinnamon, cardamom, mm -hmm. um, add some sugar or honey and put that in the fridge for the kids. Mm. Right. Um, That's right. In, in, instead of Missouri orange juice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay, so while we're talking about the teas, let me just uh, show everybody. So um, I've had these now for a while. We've got Healing Warrior, a powerful mm. blend for coughs, colds, and flu. And the ingredients are yarrow, sage, peppermint, and echinacea. 
How do you come up with the with the blends? Do you intuit that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I sat sat with them for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. There is also, I mean, there's scientific evidence between peppermint and yarrow to eons of, of knowledge blend very well together for coughs okay. and colds. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is the new this is the new packaging. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. right. Um, in the in the in the boxes, more environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I've kind of sat, and it just is just awesome. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and then I just wanted to show. This is a new thing. I don't know power salt. Right, right, right. I can see that for, mm -hmm. for non tea people. Uh, this has got nettle, moringa, sesame, and normal salt. So use it instead of salt. You're just adding a little bit more nutrition. Does it taste? Food. Does it taste salty? Yeah, it tastes salty, but you get just a little bit something else. It's okay, delicious. lovely. Oh, so on, on a sandwich with avo, um, so so all those people who've got high blood pressure and shouldn't be having salt. I mean, that's the first thing they've got to cut off their list. Yeah. That would be perfect a for them. Bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> going to overstimulate. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Just, okay. a, just a little bit in it. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. This one. This is yeah. a really good resurrection rooibos chai. Yeah. So this is using uh, one of my favorite um, traditional plants, the resurrection bush, which grows all around Damshawa and Gobon Carrera. Most mm -hmm. of the year it looks, it's dead. Just as it's like this little, these little black leaves growing out the rocks. And if you go now, it's all green. So in mm. about four hours, once the rain's fallen, it just awakens. Oh, really? So it comes yeah. back to life. That's why it's called it resurrection. It, it, looks, it looks dead and it comes back to life very quickly. Mm. And, mm. I, and I did hear a story of um, someone who had a sample in... Uh, Stellenbosch University collected, I don't know, 1890, and they were just assessing them. And he took it out and put it, put a glass jar over it overnight. Mm -hmm. The next morning, that plant had green shoots. A hundred and forty-year-old twig. Wow. Had come back to life. Mm. Wow. Um, well, you so, kind of think if, 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 it can, if it can do that for itself, it must be extremely life-giving for us. Yeah. I mean, that, I, it's just amazing. A resurrection bush, the whole thing, like the whole rebirth of mm. joy and of, of whatever you need reborn in you. Or mm. re, right. Yeah, the, giving it to us, particularly in Zimbabwe. I mean, we're continually being reborn in mm. all sorts of new currencies and you just... Constantly drink resurrection. <laughs> okay, and, and you can drink as much as you like. You're not limited to one or two um, cups a day. What does it taste like, resurrection? I don't love it on its own. Um, so I blended it with rooibos. Okay. Um, and, and spices, cardamom, cinnamon, mm. stony, fennel. Mm. Um, it's nice to put a few twigs in in your water, your drinking water, and allow that resurrection to happen, and then drink that water. Mm -hmm. Here, you've got a really energetically charged. Uh, That's right. Liquid, yeah, without mm -hmm. kind of, it's, it's quite bitter, bitter and aromatic. I'd say mm -hmm. the, the resurrection bush. Mm -hmm. And this is something and, easily that that we can go and purchase or. Um, where do we get a plant just to have it in our own gardens? Will it grow in a garden? What does it need a special mm. climate? I, I must say, I haven't tried um, to grow it myself. I mean, it grows in the in the rocks. Mm -hmm. um, so it's incredibly hardy. Mm. Okay, okay. We could try. Yeah, we could try. 
mean, I'd be interested to hear anyone who's managing to grow it in their gardens. Mm. Um, but so you can find it, yeah, in the supermarkets um, or go out to Dom Shower. Go, mm. go out to a rocky outcrop and just harvest a little bit for yourself and keep it at home mm. Mm. to put in your water. Because obviously it lasts a very long time anyway. Yeah. And and then and then Peter, do you uh, actually grow a lot of these ingredients yourself, or do you have to go foraging in the wilderness to go and get some of these things, herbs and spices? No, most of them I grow. Yeah. So you, you I, grow I, majority. There's cinnamon. No, cinnamon. the spice is not so much. This is pretty tricky. I have tried, mm -hmm. um, but the herbs, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I grow them in about um, about two hectares. It's a pretty wild, wild garden. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing's in neat rows. Everything is just like growing with everything else. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it's it's lovely. Mm. It sounds yeah. like fun, and and you can be creative and connected, and yeah, it must be just amazing, wonderful. Okay, yeah. so now. Uh, Peter, where can people get hold of you? Um, you obviously don't sell direct to the public. No. Um, no. But so all of these can be, be found. You, you supply us. You've written here, pick and pay, spa, and food lovers market. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. You can get that. Um, I think my email address is on the box. And I'm on okay. um, Facebook. Peter Lily's on Facebook. It's on Instagram, so you can message me. Probably okay. better Instagram. Um, okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. If, if people have questions, or I'm so happy, you know, to talk anything herbal. Mm. Okay. Um, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a qualified herbalist. So, like treating health care, health things. No. Mm. I can recommend you other really good mm. qualified practitioners. Mm. Um, Oh, but I, I'm sure you can offer up advice to people if they've got, say, a, a kid with a fever or, yeah. um, you know what I mean, yeah. that kind of thing. You know, I'm sure that, yeah. that you can do that. All right. So I'm going to put your all of your links in the bottom here so people can. Um, and I really, really recommend that that you please try these these teas because they are really fabulous. And even more fabulous is that they're made in Zimbabwe. <laughs> they're not imported yeah. from. Yeah. 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 So they're, I mean, really, adds... they're really like so local and, and it's, it's it's a small company. I mean people have said do you want to export? It's like I don't think so. I don't know. No. Because that's formal. <clears throat> that's quite I need to grow things separately. <laughs> but I also, I also feel like it's important for people to eat food out of the ground where they live. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? You like more of an energetic match to to the soil where you live. Mm. And I think this is why a lot of the time, like when I travel, I struggle so much with the food. The bananas are not the same. Nothing is mm. the same. It just, and I think it's because my body's not a match. I don't know where that food is coming from. Maybe it's imported from Japan or yeah. hell knows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're just not an energetic match because you're your body is so aligned to the soil where you grow up and you think you've you've grown up your whole life eating food that comes out of that soil. You're completely connected to that place because you're made up of the same stuff, essentially, you know? So, um, yeah, so I think that it's it's a very valuable thing to to try and be as local and eat as local as, as you possibly can. Mm. Yeah. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, and, and, um, and Nella for you, you guys creating this. No, no, it's, um, we're having fun. We're having fun. And let me just say to people, please, if you're interested in, in all of these metaphysical fringe topics, and please just look at our other videos. You always find something that appeals to you. We love um, fringe, alternative, quantum physics, energy, healing, you know, things like that. Um, so good that's really, stuff. yeah. I think, well, I think it's a good stuff. <laughs> good stuff it is. <laughs> so um, anyway, so that's it for today. Thank you everybody for joining us, and thank you, Peter. Until the next time. Ciao. Thanks, Tanya. Bye.